Hi everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to do an updated version of how I get aging points and how I get divines for free. Lots of videos on the channel are dedicated to earning divines for free, but some of them are quite outdated now because I was really focused on using the pass horse system to help get divines. However, I have done an updated video on how to get passes for free in game. So if you want to know all of the current ways to get passes in game, do go check out that video. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to talk about my personal strategy towards getting aging points, towards getting divines. For aging points, I have also done a video on all of the different ways to get aging points. And even though that video is about two years old now, I think it shouldn't be outdated. I don't think any of the actual methods to get aging points has changed. However, my strategy towards getting them, like my actual aging point farm has changed a little bit. So without further ado, let's talk about aging points. So I have had a couple questions on how I get so many aging points. I think in one of my recent videos, you'll have noticed that I have over 30,000 aging points. As of today, I have 30,421 aging points. My secret is it's really easy in theory, even if it's quite difficult in practice. And that's just to save, just work lots of horses and save up more aging points than what you spend. For me, it's just naturally easy for me to save aging points. I'm not on a team. I'm not really interested in the GP race. So I just don't use aging points that often. I did have a really huge head start with pass horses because I think when pass horses were removed I did have over 10,000 by that time. My pass farm doubled as my AP farm and because pass horses they gave me passes it was just a huge incentive to work them daily because I got droppings from my plant horse divines and I also got aging points for that and that was quite a few horses that I worked every day. These days I don't work that many horses just because I don't I don't need to AP farm anymore. I have enough aging points for that. But my daily divines, I do work every day. That's probably 40 something because I do have my daily Chinese divine tap that I do also work every day. So I have a little over 40 horses that I definitely work every day. And then I do have a couple other project farms where there's maybe only three horses tops in this farm. There's just one horse, this one current bluff that I'm working daily. And this one I've got two. And I don't even work my Immortal AP farm anymore. So yeah, my main tip is really just to work lots of horses and save up your aging points. If you don't yet have a lot of horses, you can go into the sales, buy some for cheap. And I also just recommend covering your own mares with your stallions just to produce really cheap foals. And then just work those up daily. I do get some aging points from a couple of my divines. I think I have two that offer aging points. And of course, you can get them from events as a prize. And you can get them from opening up luck items. If you're having a difficult time saving up APs when you're first starting out, I recommend that for a week or so, make sure you're working like the same number of horses daily. Just so you get an average idea of how many horses you farm every day. And at the end of every day, once you've worked all those horses, go into your black market item history and look to see how many APs you earn that day. That way you get an idea of how many APs you earn that day. And if you earn, say, about 40 on average every day, maybe you'll only use 20 of those, maybe 15 of those. That way you're saving at least half of them. Just set a budget for yourself and just keep track of how much you spend versus how much you earn and then just save them up that way. That's that's the only tip that I can say. Just uh, work more horses and just save up your aging points. Now let's get into how I get divines. As I go through and I talk about my, my rules, guidelines that I follow, keep in mind that you do not need any of these divines to get the items I'm going to talk about. All of the different items I'm going to talk about, you can get from events as prizes. You can get all of them from events. Some of them you can get from the exchanges and some of them you can get from opening up Titans challenges. And even though the daily objective system does take a lot longer, I think, to get passes, it 
it is still very much possible to get divines for free. <laughs> so now that that's out of the way, let's talk about my two main tips or rules for getting free divines. My first main tip is to save. Save up all of your passes, save up all of your luck items, your resources, and tip number two, only go for divines that benefit your game. Sure, if you wanted a divine just for the sake of getting a divine, you could go into the sales and buy a Falabella here for, let's see if we can pull up the Falabella. We're going to start by price. And you could buy a Falabella for 800 passes on international server. Oh, something else to keep in mind. Always catch the aging point UFOs. <laughs> that, that's really helpful too. So back to the divines. You could buy a Falabella for 800 passes. And if you wanted to be very generous with the objectives, you could say like save up for two months just in case you miss any days of logging in. There were some objectives you couldn't complete. This is two months of objectives. One, if you actually complete them every day. However, I do not recommend buying the Falabella for 800 passes because you will break rule number two of only going for divines that benefit your game. This Falabella will not benefit your game because it will not help you get more divines. Another example is the current wild horse offer right now. There is a wild horse for 900 passes. I don't recommend this either because the wild horses stop giving you passes once they reach 80 years old. That's not even 800 passes really because they arrive at three years old and then it does take a little bit of time to actually get the horse tamed. I mean, that's probably only six to 700 passes this horse will give you. So I, I just don't let, recommend the wilds. I don't like them for that reason. So let's start with tip number one which is to save specifically save up and only go for the divine if you know you can win it within that current offer fragments do save so if you say through like five titans challenges at the manticore and the titans challenge right now and you didn't get it your fragments would still they'd still be there. However, it could be another two years before this manticore comes back around. Your fragments, any resources that you spent on that manticore are tied up in him until you get him and you pay him back. Now, I did sort of break this rule. I've broken it a few times really, but you know, um, I broke this rule with Croatius because I threw about 22 Titans challenges at him a few months ago, but I do still have the 249 fragments for him. Those 22 Titans challenges, however, they're tied up until I can get and he'll pay me back. It's not as big of a deal for me because I do have a fairly self-sustaining divine farm. I have divines that I can fall back on. I can complete most of the objectives. When you're first starting out, if those five Titans challenges are all that you have, save up until you know you can definitely get the divine. Don't just throw those Titans challenges, those five away. What you can do if you're not sure how many Titans challenges you might need or golden fleeces to actually fill up the meter, on the international forum, I don't know if any of the other servers have this, but we have a new divine dust topic in the events forum. And that's where players will share about how many fragments on average they get for each particular offer. Because it does differ per divine. A Coracious, we were getting like nine to 18 fragments per Titan's challenge versus something like a Falabella, you're probably going to get 50 fragments pretty easily. So definitely go check out that topic before you open up any luck items. That way you have an idea of about how much it'll cost. If it costs 50 Titans challenges, say, to fill up the fragment meter, then just save your five Titans challenges. Don't just rely on luck and hope you can get to level seven or whatever within those five Titans challenges because you're really risking it. Now on to tip number two of only going for divines that benefit your game. For me, there are two different groups of beneficial divines. You have divines that help you get more divines and group number two are divines that offer items that I use quite a bit. That way getting those items from divines means that I don't have to spend my passes to get those items from the black market. For this video though we're just going to talk about that first group of divines that helps us get more divines because I think that's what's really helped me get a lot of the divines that I have. That group of divines then breaks down even further into three more groups of divines. The first group are divines that offer you passes either directly or indirectly. Second group are divines that offer you luck items directly and whenever I say luck item, I mean Titan's Challenge, Golden Fleece, or Horn of Plenty. And then the third group are divines that offer you luck items indirectly. 
starting off with the past givers who I think are the best because these divines give you passes. They, they just straight up give you passes. And the beauty about that is that no matter what offer a divine is in, you can buy it with passes. If it's in a Titan's Challenge or Horn of Plenty, or if a divine is in like a companion chest type of offer, you know you can buy that item with passes. Versus if you say have a divine that offers you a golden fleece, that doesn't help you very much if you want the Manticore who is in a Titan's Challenge. Yes, you could go in the exchanges and try to trade that golden fleece for Titan's Challenge, but what if your exchanges are already out for the week? You can't make any exchanges at all, so that doesn't help you. Or what if nobody accepts your exchange and you can't get a Titan's Challenge that way? That also doesn't help you. So I really think pass givers, obviously you do have to take into account their drop rate because a divine like Gypsum is nowhere near as valuable as a Sapphire. He's just not. His drop rate is terrible. But I mean, if you if they have a good drop rate, a pass giver is the best by far. I think out of my entire farm, I have about 30 divines that offer me passes. So with this one, I've got Ruby, Jade, Zaldea, Gypsum is lack of generosity. He is Pearl, Sapphire, Hippogriff. Uh, we've got Mars, Eo, Moons, Mother Earth, Jupiter, and Osiris. And then I do have a couple other pass givers in my, my inactive lesson farm. And then what about those indirect pass givers? So I consider items like pass seeds that I get from my two Caryopsis divines and Hestia's gift that I get from Carnivorous, I consider those to be indirect passes. Caryopsis, the plant seeds, you plant 25 of those seeds and you get 100 passes. So that one, that one's pretty easy. That's a given. Now with the Hestia's gift, this one is a bit more trickier because you never know what, how much you can actually sell a unicorn with the Hestia's gift for. What I do, I'll go into the sales, I'll buy a high GP unicorn for a decent Equus price, I'll blup it to also help increase the value a bit that way, I'll put the Hestia's gift on it, and sometimes I can sell them for two to 300 passes. What I have been doing lately to increase that value even more, I do have some draft unicorns, so a draft unicorn itself, obviously so long as it has covers left, has more value than a regular unicorn and obviously taking into GP and everything into account too. There are obviously going to be lots of exceptions to the different things that I'm going to talk about, but if we just say generally a draft unicorn has more value than a regular horse would. So you could put the Hestia's gift on a draft unicorn and sell it for more passes that way. I actually got carnivorous kind of on accident I had no plans on getting this horse I got him from the original event he was released in which was the plants at the time I thought well I don't breed unicorns that much I still don't I don't need that guaranteed chance for a unicorn I just played the event very casually but I played it strategically enough at the same time that the last two days of the event came around and I saw I could complete that event and get this horse for only nine or ten old passes and I took it and I'm really glad I did because he paid me back years ago just from the unicorns that I bluffed and then sold with that Hestia's gift. So this is a very good horse to have. So those are the pass givers. We then have our direct luck item givers. These are the divines that outright give you the Titans Challenge, Horns of Plenty, or Golden Fleece. I, however, do not have any of these divines. It just seems like whenever one of those particular divines comes around, I either can't afford it, I don't have enough, or in the case of Set, he offers a Titan's Challenge and he was around either last week or the week before, I, I'm already saving up everything that I have for the upcoming solar. So I couldn't get him. I didn't want to get him and just spend everything I have because there are other divines that I want more who are more profitable than him. And then of course, sometimes when the divine comes around, the offer just seems too expensive compared to what his drop, to what his drop rate is. However, I do have quite a few indirect luck item givers who make up for it. I consider indirect luck items to be Theramez Wing Staff and the Themis Scale Nyx Pack combo. I have used these items quite a few times in many of the, the videos where I've gone to get, where I've gone to open up 
luck items to get divine. So definitely check out any of those opening luck items videos. I've used those items quite a bit. So the first divine I got that offered me one of those items was the Egyptian divine thought he was the first one out of that particular group. He offers a staff so I can just outright purchase a Titan's Challenge fleece or a Horn of Plenty. I don't have to use passes to pay for it. So that one's nice. That one's pretty, pretty easy, self-explanatory. The next divine I got was Sekhmet and she offers a Themis scale every two months. However, I really highly recommend that you only use this item with the NYX pack. Due to the NYX pack's nearly 600 pass value, you can get three Titans Challenges, three golden fleeces or six horns of plenty. It's the best value that way. However, I didn't have any Nyx pack divines at the time that I got her. So I was just having to save up Nyx packs that I got, which was few and far between from events. Because remember, you can get all of the items that I'm talking about from events as prizes, some of them from luck items and some of them from the exchanges. So I just had to save up Nyx packs. And because it was taking a long time to get Nyx packs compared to the like two month drop rate of a Themis scale. I tried I tried getting a Balios every time that I could. I finally ended up getting a Balios Divine and instead of one, I ended up with four of them. This wasn't from the same offer. I think the first Balios I got was in one year and then I got three the next time he came around. So then I ended up having four Nyx packs a month from my Balios. I now had more Nyx packs than I was getting Themis' scale. And then I ended up with Rehua as well, who also offers a Nyx pack, just not as often as Balios. So then I made it my mission to get another Themis scale divine. So I did finally get Tear divine. And then last year during the 2019 Black Friday offer, I got a second Sekhmet divine. So I got another Themis scale divine that way too. And that pretty much outlines my strategy towards getting divines. A lot of it's just really knowing how the different items work and how you can get, how you can make the most of them. And yes, until you get divines that offer these items, it will probably take you a while to get them from events. I know with an item like the Hestia's Gift, this one's actually fairly easy to get. The events I recommend you look out for are potions type events or decoration events. During the mask decorating event that we had earlier in 2020, I got, I think three, I got three Hestia's gifts from that event for free. I don't recommend spending passes on an event just to get items, unless unless it's just like 10 passes for a Hestia's gift. I mean, and you know you're gonna get the Hestia's, that would be fine. But ordinarily, I do not spend passes on any event just to get the items within them. If I'm gonna spend passes, I'm gonna do it so I know I can get the divine. And definitely pay attention to, to the different events that where you can choose your prize, look to see if it's more beneficial to get something like a Hestia's gift compared to a Titan's Challenge. Because if you can sell a Unicorn Mare with the Hestia's gift for 500 passes, it's much more beneficial to you to get that Hestia's than that Titan's Challenge. It may seem, it may seem very tempting to get that Titan's Challenge, but definitely look to see what the better offer is. And of course, don't forget to do your pass objectives every day. I do mine every day, but there are those objectives like remove a unicorn horn, remove Pegasus wings that I do not do because they're just not worth it for what you get in return. So I hope this was helpful, but if needed, I can try and go more into depth on any particular point that, that I brought up. So if you do have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I hope this was helpful and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye.